Today we're talking about why the INFJ's intelligence gets underestimated. And you hear a lot of INFJs say about themselves that there is some kind of knowledge that they have. I could say that about myself. It's foresight, it's knowing how certain situations will turn out. And you ask yourself why you're continuously being overlooked when it comes to ideas, when it comes to saying what's going to happen, when it comes to just taking a stand for something, you know that you're right. And maybe, yeah, we make mistakes, but very often INFJs have a very keen understanding of how things are going to turn out. There are a lot of things we might not know. We might not be great at details. You might not be great at doing things like they've always been done. But when it comes to looking forward and into the future, we do have a really strong intelligence. And that's just based on how our cognitive functions are set up. But the question becomes, if it is so evident, like to us, and if we look back at situations that we've gone through that have shown us that we're right, why do people continuously keep underestimating us, don't believe what we're saying that's going to happen, and therefore just disregard us altogether? We're going to talk about this today in detail, and we're going to talk about how to change that, how to use that knowledge to your advantage and not feel like it's a burden, but it's actually a gift. Before we get started, remember to download the free poster on the five pillars to an INFJ epic life so you can start your transformational journey today. And if you want to take it to the next level, then work with me privately. All the information you find in the links in the description. We'll cut to the chase. The reason why people underestimate the INFJ's intelligence is because the things that we know about are going to happen in the future. They're not going to happen today. They're not even going to happen next week but they will happen. Yes, there are situations where we're wrong, no doubt about it, but that's just part of the deal. How you know, okay, there's always going to be 5% that are going to be a mistake, 5% that are working out just a little bit differently, but the majority of times that we have set out to do something or we know we're going to go a certain direction and we anticipate the possible scenarios, these things very often come true. And on top of that, because this is our go-to thought process, we actually become better at this. You know, I made a video on the exponential learning curve of the INFJ a while ago, like years ago and a couple of times, because it's so evident to how we think. And it's one of those things that will give us big self-confidence when we're not looking for the result today. We're not comparing ourselves to others. You know, you shouldn't do that in the first place, but you know, for us as INFJs, of Jace, it's even more important not to compare our progress today with the progress of others. You have to look at your trajectory because for INFJs, the big result comes after a while. And that is also the reason why people underestimate you. Yes, you might be right in many cases. Yes, you might say what's going to happen and people don't believe you. And then years later, you're like, yeah, things actually worked out the way I thought. But the thing is this, after years, maybe you're not even talking to the same people. After years, they have forgotten that they had a different opinion. You have made it a reality, so therefore, they're not even questioning it. They're not looking at themselves and saying, oh, she or he was right, you know? They were right all along and I was wrong, you know? That's just not going through a person's head in any kind of way, particularly because people are concerned with their own lives. And so if you know this, what is the thing that you're supposed to do? The thing is this, you just have to accept it. You have to accept the fact that people are not going to know what's going to happen. People are not going to know that you're going to be right about certain situations, but it's on you to set that tone, to sit on that trajectory, to go that path, and then you continuously proving yourself and your thoughts and you know your intelligence and whatever it is, just by the way you lead your life. And yes, maybe the person that now doesn't believe you won't see your results in a couple of years, but in comparison to a couple of years before when there was another person who didn't believe what you were going to make happen, nowadays you're in a completely different scenario. And your life shows that. The way you live it, the people you surround yourself with, the peace that you create, the abundance in your life, 
that is the indicator of how you've been able to improve because we all start at different levels. We all have different things we've gone through as children, you know, life circumstances, things that we cannot control, sicknesses, just some kind of challenges, but also some things just happen out of sheer luck. And once you accept that people will always underestimate you, you stop caring about it altogether. Because you have to understand, if this is something that bothers us, it's because there is a part of us. It might be a tiny little bit, you know, inside of our head, it might be the 15 year old version of ourselves or 25 year old version, it does not matter. You know, there's a part of you that still believes that, yes, you have that idea, yes, you have that foresight, but, you're not sure if it's really going to happen. And that's why you want other people to give you the feedback. We as INFJs, we love to contemplate about things. We love to have an idea and just get a kick out of knowing that it could work. But here's the challenge, here's the problem, and this is actually the biggest opportunity. If we are in a position where we say, oh, I know what's going to happen, and that in itself gives me the satisfaction, what are we going to do? Nothing. We already know it's going to happen. Why go for it? We've already made up our mind that it's going to happen. And if another person gives us the feedback of, yeah, you're right. You're so smart. You know exactly what's going to happen. We will have one more reason to just sit back and not do anything about it. And then what happens? You actually become bitter. You become depressed. You feel like life is not happening on your terms because you have those two things that are a complete opposite. Your mind that knows that things should be working out. Your mind that knows all the great things you could achieve. And then on the other side, you have the life you're actually creating for yourself. And this is something that can be a huge burden on us. It really hurts our soul the bigger this gap becomes because we have actually put ourselves in a position where we feel completely powerless. I mean, think about it. If you look at people who are homeless, if you look at people who have gone through real hardships in their life and you can't just tell them, oh, just pick up your life and you know get everything in order and everything will be great. There is a belief in that person that they're not able to make it out of that situation. Yes, I know there are different situations. Yes, I know there are real hardships that people are faced with, but we shouldn't underestimate the psychology behind it. And this happens on every level. You really don't have to look at a person who's at the bottom of their self-worth of their confidence in order to make that distinguishment. This works on every single level. Our beliefs create our reality, but it's always a delayed reaction. And it only happens if we take that action. If we don't, if we just think of, oh yeah, I know this could work out, nothing's going to happen. And again, this discrepancy is a real bad thing. So I know what I can achieve today. I know that my ability to achieve certain things is much bigger than let's say five years ago because the steps that I've taken, the person that I've become, my identity is based on, yes, I've taken those steps. I've proven to myself that this is true. And the more often you prove to yourself that you're right, that this idea that you had in your mind that could work, you actually went for it and you just cleared out any doubts because now it's an externally observable fact. Remember TE, extroverted thinking, the function that we hate the most? That's the thing that we have to sort of take into consideration and to just do it out of a rational thought because every single time you do that, get new information into your system, you get to create something amazing, the next step ahead, and you really prove to that 15 year old version of you or 25 year old or five year old doesn't matter that had those doubts, that it doesn't matter if Anna or Peter believe what you're doing or that they believe that you have some kind of special intelligence because you've proven it to yourself. There are certain things we're so sure about, like we're sure we're able to brush our teeth. We're sure we can tie up our shoelaces. We know that's what we can do. And if we've proven to ourselves that the ideas we set in our minds, we're going to make happen. If we continuously take steps that just show us that we're not going to give up, that we keep the promises we make to ourselves, 
you really stop caring if other people believe you or not. Because at some point, they sort of realize the people who either just come back into your life or are just there to witness it, yeah, they will recognize it at some point. But for you, it's like a little thing like, yeah, I was able to, you know, get out of the house or, you know, take that action that I take every week. It has just become so normal to you that there isn't this satisfaction that you're hoping for. I mean, because if you think about it, what is the thing that really disappoints you when people underestimate your intelligence? There is a feeling of sadness. There is a feeling of disconnect. There's a feeling of, I want to be that person who's able to make all of these things happen. But in order to feel like this, it needs to have some kind of, you know, connection to the outside world. And if everybody around me has a disbelief that I'm able to do this, then I cannot be the person I want to be. But if you prove to yourself that you can be and the people around you have no other choice but to accept that fact because, you know, a person can always say, yeah, I don't believe you're going to write that book. That person can say, yeah, I don't believe you're going to be able to move to that city and get that apartment of your dreams. But once you've moved, once you're living in this apartment, once you've written and published this book, there's nothing they can say. That's reality. Those are the things that are undeniable. And that's where we have to get to. So get out of your own way. Understand that people are always going to underestimate you, not because you're less deserving or because there's something wrong with you. And that's why people in particular don't believe what you are doing, but because the way you show up with your intelligence, the way you can make those moves is never predictable, is always first happening in your mind. You have that vision and of course, people are not able to see that before you manifest it, before you make it real. There is no other way. So the point is to stick to what you're doing, to know that you're doing it because of the progress that you're making, that you're becoming the person that you want to be. If you want to feel strong, guess what? Do things that make you feel strong. If you want to feel like you're doing something extraordinary, don't wait for people to give you this impression of, yeah, you're amazing. Just do things that prove it to you. And that's a completely different approach, a completely different way of living. And before I started my journey, I never thought that was possible. I never thought that's something that is attainable or achievable. I never knew how this was going to feel like. But now that I've gone through that, now that I've done so many things that changed my life completely, I feel completely in my body. I don't feel like, oh, I did this amazing thing. It is like my new normal. And it's not like people around me are like, oh, wow, you did this amazing thing that you said you were going to do. No, people pretty much still don't care because people are drowning in their own problems. People are drowning in their own life. They're concerned with their own life. That's just part of being human but you're just not going to care anymore. And that's the fun thing. And I can guarantee you, every person who's gone after their dreams feels the same way. They get the satisfaction through taking the steps, proving it to themselves, and you become independent, fearless, and just excited about the next project you're taking on. Because every single time you become the person you want to be, more and more. Remember, if you want some kickstart ideas on how to make that happen, download the poster through the five pillars to an INFJ epic life. If you want some advanced help and you say, I'm ready to make big shifts happen in my life, then work with me privately. All the information you find in the links in the description. And if you want to watch another video now that is in alignment with today's topic, then watch the video, how the INFJ shocks everyone.